I am so excited to welcome someone super incredible today. I've had the pleasure of meeting this badass, amazing woman. And uh, you would think that she would just be badass in one thing. No, 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 no. She likes to exceed in every area of her life. And when I first met Dr. T, Dr. Teshima, she just lit my eyes up into what's possible. Not only was she with and is with still the Army for over 20 years, um, she's now just got asked to be a commander in the Army Reserves. I'll let her speak about that a little bit. And not only that, but she's also a doctor. And on top of that, she's also a powerful woman, faith-based, um, really we have a huge heart for helping people in health. And I just want to bring her up here and introduce her to you guys. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Tashima Fair. I'm a health, wellness, and mindset coach. I'm a board certified OBGYN. I'm a colonel in the United States Army Reserves. I'm an author and I am a speaker. So I help um, female medical professionals burn body fat and have more energy without restriction, without diet restrictions. Uh, so that is the magic I bring to the world. Ooh, and I love it so much. I think that your story is incredible. Um, I know that we first met, what was it? Just a couple months ago, right? Couple months ago. Mm -hmm. couple months ago. Yeah. How did you find me? I'm curious. So um, I clicked on an ad on Facebook for a masterclass you are having um, and really just, just resonated with me. Everything you said, um, having hard driven sales and, and being able to close in a hard driven way. Um, I've learned, you know, some marketing, but I've never learned it this way, the way you were teaching. So that's really what caused me to like click and, and listen to the masterclass and and um join <laughs> pretty much <laughs> senior transformation the past couple months has been really beautiful to observe and watch mm -hmm. uh, just in terms of like you getting better in the sales process because i remember when you first came in and we started doing role plays and you were trying to script on for size it was like a little not flowy <laughs> but, no. but we, it was very like you know drill sergeant a little bit which is totally okay like mm -hmm. yeah. but now watching your ability to connect not only to like prospects and the people around you but also to your audience because i know you're stepping into more of like doing like healthy wednesdays what are you calling it for wednesdays yes, wednesdays oh, like wednesdays yeah and like you're hard to serve and to give back to others can you tell us all a little bit of your story um going back to when you were first um wanting to get into the health space i know that you you were telling this story about like being at the hospital for a really long time and you were delivering babies at night. Like, can you tell us all that story? So um, way back when I started my transformation, um, it, it's been a journey, trust me. Um, but when I was a, a resident, um, it was super, super hard to lose the weight. I was working like 80 to 120 hours a week. And I've tried some things, been up and down in my weight my whole life. Uh, but as, a, an, as an adult, young adult, it was really super hard uh, working 80 to 120 hours a week, trying to be up all night, drinking like three, four cups of coffee. I just remember one night I we were up like the whole night and we, we delivered probably um, more than five babies. It may have been close to 10, but... It was really more than five. It was just like baby after baby after baby. Um, and it was like no sleep that, <laughs> that the whole 24 hours it was like no sleep. And so it was super hard to work on myself because I was working so hard. Um, and then not until I got joined uh, active duty army and did I was I like faced with the the fact that I was super overweight and super unhealthy, um, even though I had been, you know, working out and doing all the things, but I was just super overweight. Did not meet the standard. You know, I didn't know what the standard was when I first joined, but uh, I knew I didn't meet it. And um, I figured it out real quick <laughs> that I didn't meet it. Yeah. And, um, so at my heaviest, I was 186. And I think for my age back then, 
the standard was 135 or something like that. So I was, you know, 50 pounds overweight. Yeah, I think that a lot of us ladies have this issue. And you said something super important. You said that you were working out and doing all the things, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm curious because I know we have some ladies watching. Hi, ladies. I think Claudette's in there. What's up, girl? Big supporter. She's awesome. What do you mean by that? Because I know that a lot of us struggle with that. Like, hey, I'm working out. I'm doing all the things. I'm like, I'm not seeing any results. Like, is, is that what you mean? And I think that a lot of us ladies like struggle with that or not knowing how or we're working so much. I'm like, when are we going to put in the time to be able to figure that out? Um, you know, I get, remember getting 68 pounds with my pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, and just feeling like afterwards, like not even knowing where to start. Just like literally looking at my clothes, nothing fit. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this stuff? Right. Mm -hmm. So could you give us like a little insight right there on like what you meant by that? And like maybe a few tips that we can we'll learn from you. So when I started, you know, I started with fitness first and I thought my thinking was like exercise was the way to make me healthy, a healthy weight. And um, before I started working super hard, it it, it helped. But uh, as I got into like work mode after medical school, exercise was no longer really helping me. Now I felt good afterwards but it wasn't helping me helping me lose the weight and so fit then I slowly started to learn that fitness is not the first thing that you should go to when you're on the weight loss journey it's more like mindset and nutrition are the most important things and so I didn't I didn't know that initially until I was faced with that reality yeah and I was like oh the stuff that I'm doing is not working because it's not the most important thing I should be focused on. I should be focused on what I'm putting in my body, like how much I'm putting in my body or the quality that I'm putting in my body so that my body will work more efficiently for me. Mm -hmm. and, and you think that that's the biggest issue like with the with the clients and stuff that you're seeing that maybe it's not just fitness, it's like some thinking about this as well or is it more the nutrition or what do you think is the most important? Uh, the most important thing that I see um, with women is that uh, the they focus on one aspect of fitness, which is the exercise, but they don't focus on the mindset piece or the nutrition piece as much. So they think, well, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't eat that much, but it's like not, and that may be the case, like you may not be eating enough or you may not just the quality of the food that you're eating is not sufficient to fuel your body in the proper way. Okay. And um, when it comes to, you know, the ladies that you're you're currently working with and putting together the Wellness Wednesdays and all this stuff you know, for them, mm -hmm. like what is a couple of tips that you can give them immediately? Because I know uh, a few days ago we were talking about somebody asking you just about the water and they're like, maybe I'm drinking too much water. And I was super surprised. They're like, oh, no, keep drinking the water. The water is not the problem. No. Right? What is like a biggest misconception and maybe like a couple tips that we could do right now to help? Biggest misconception, a couple of things. Like you think you have to make the big, huge changes all at once. Mm -hmm. Your brain doesn't like that. Um, your brain was designed to keep you safe. And so if you make these big, huge changes, then eventually your results, you start to plateau, you start to get bored start to revert back to your old habits mm. and just taking baby steps will definitely help you in, in the longer run. So for instance, if you drink three sodas every single day, you've been doing that for years. You can't just all of a sudden stop drinking soda. You're going to crash. You have to wean yourself slowly off of the soda until you're done. So Go down to two, then go down to one, then go down to zero. All the while adding in some a supplement that will keep you energized uh, and keep you from crashing. And so that's what I do with my clients is I baby step them down to results. And making those small tweaks in what you're doing actually leads to bigger changes. Yeah, and most of your clients are like really busy professional women, right? So. Mm -hmm. I find that interesting because I don't know if anybody else feels like this, but as a busy professional woman myself, like it's really hard for me to find the time. You know, the only way that I normally get to the gym in the morning is if I have like a buddy with me mm -hmm. and 
my girlfriend, she's visiting this guy in London right now. So I've been sleeping in all week. Right? <laughs> I've been just sleeping in. Yeah. It's so good. And then I wake up and I feel so guilty. And I feel like we have to have something set up in place of like mm-hmm. accountability or like a way for us to work out like at home. I think you were talking about doing squats and brushing your teeth. Was that you? Yeah, it helps me. I used to do that. Right. So, like, what can us ladies do? The ones that are super busy, right? Like, really, really busy professionals. You're working really hard. You feel like you're not losing the weight. You're mm-hmm. trying all the things. Like, nothing's working. I don't know if that's anybody else here. Like, mm-hmm. what can we do, like, throughout the day that can at least help us get closer to where we're trying to go? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, So, what I do for my busy professional women is there's you may not have an hour at one time because most women don't or 45 minutes or 30 minutes, but you may have these pockets of time where you can get movement in and movement is medicine. Uh, so um, like with the squats, when you're brushing your teeth, that's like two minutes. If you do that twice a day, that's four minutes of movement that you, that you've done. And if you're watching TV with your husband, I mean, the commercial breaks are like five minutes a piece or can be three to five minutes. And so you can do some different exercises within those three to five minutes to get movement in. And that's like 10, 15 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think that sometimes we make it so complicated for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You had a pocket of time before your next meeting. Did you anything? I'm like, no, I scrolled on TikTok. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Don't tell anyways. Bring it in there. Right. Right. So, like going on a walk or doing something like that. No, I think it's really beautiful like what you're doing and what you're creating. Um, you know, when women work with you, what result do they normally get? It's not just like weaning them off of stuff, you know. So like what's the what's the purpose, you know, after they start working with you, like what are they what are they really getting, you know, by being in your space and in your world? So the purpose is to really help them start making themselves a priority. Mm. Cause most of them don't. Mm. They give yeah. They are givers. Women are are givers. That's yeah. what we do. We take care of everybody else, and we tend to leave ourselves for last. But we don't pour back into ourselves so that we're able to give more. And so the biggest thing that that my clients get out of it not only is it a weight loss uh, physically, but really it's like a mental transformation. Um, and a spiritual transformation of making myself a priority and always pouring into myself first so that I'm able to be more powerful and more productive in the world. I think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the more women do get a step into what it's like to be worthy, mm-hmm. to understand how powerful they are, to be like, hey, like you get to have boundaries for yourself mm-hmm. and you're worthy of it. You're worthy of the time, the space, the freedom. Mm-hmm. So hell yeah. Thank you for stepping yeah. me in that for these women and showing them what's possible. Um, I'm curious to you because I know that like you're part of our like inner circle program, right? And you're working with us and we do two things, right? Can you tell me your experience of you in terms of like your mindset shift mm-hmm. from like first started to like right now? And then we'll go into this, the sales aspect. So for me, um, it, it's, it really, it was really about me not, uh, letting go of, of, the past mm. um of because i've been doing this for five years and i've had some up and downs up and downs but i had to like let go of the past and really kind of pour into myself and learn some new things so that i can be you know the coach that i need to be for the people that god has called me to serve yeah no i think that you on a mission mm-hmm. is the reason why you're being blessed right like mm-hmm when we step into our destiny and I know that's scary, right? We're like, okay, God, you have a really big purpose for my life. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it. And I think that we get tested. Like God asked, like, are you sure? Like Mm -hmm. in the situation in your past, I know it's going to be really uncomfortable. Are you really sure? Can you hold out a little bit longer? Yeah. Keep doing in the work and just trusting like faith, faith. Right. And, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people, us women included, like we've been disappointed a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it comes to business not working out or something not working in our favor like, it's so easy to be like oh this isn't for me yeah definitely you know versus being like all right i'm gonna trust i'm gonna trust i'm gonna trust so 
I honor you for like asking for support because I feel like us ladies, we have a hard time asking for support and you've been yeah. moving up in a really powerful way and 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 extending me like, hey, I need help with this or we need to move with this and yeah. being vocal about what you want, what shows that you love yourself. Yeah. If you're not asking people for support, it's it's a form of like uh lone wolf things you feel like you're going to um uh oppose your your problems on someone else or like push your issues on someone else like you don't want to be a burden mm-hmm. um, you know and that's such not the truth for right? you get no. to have people that are in your corner and support you mm-hmm. so i really honor you for showing up like that because you're giving permission to other women in our group to also show up that way and ask mm-hmm. for help yeah holy shit like you're such a leader you know the fact that you just got asked to be a commander yeah right? showcases the leadership that you have and I know that you were telling me that like it was rare for you going into that position. Can you talk mm-hmm. about that? So, uh, yes, funny story. So, I um, I was a commander for two years uh, for of a small unit uh, of soldiers for two years from twenty. It started during the pandemic, and so um, it that was a difficult transition to go from being in person to virtual. Um, and then coming back in person in, in 2021. Um, but we were able to manage and, and to, you know, be a pretty stellar unit, the, one of the best units in our battalion and while I was command and, and we kept up that reputation. So um, I got out of command uh, May of last year and then uh, the command list. Um, so it's a list that they put out. Uh, just came out last month and I was asked to step into this position again. Um, now it's of a larger unit. It's of a brigade size unit. Um, what does that mean? Help us. Brigade size unit meaning it's going to be over a thousand soldiers that I'm <laughs> commander of. Uh, and it's, it's, it's so different. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of responsibility, but I'm like, okay. Oh, I'm like, okay, well, God, let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> Most yeah. Challenge. So, um, it's going to be awesome. Um, and I'm excited for it to, uh, embark on this new adventure, um, and see where it goes. Yeah. No, I'm really proud of you. I definitely believe my whole heart that you're not only going to just lead them, but you're going to lead them with excellence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can really see what it's like to have, uh, a leader that's there to lead with service, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, um, because I think that's missing in the world right now. It really is, which is really sad, but like it's missing, you know, but it's okay because you're going to be able to fill it. And, um, you know, the second aspect that I wanted to go into, and I'm, I'm going to pull up our, your Instagram for everyone to be able to follow you. I'm going to put mm-hmm. that up here. Um, but can you go ahead and kind of tell us a little bit about, um, your experience, you know, in terms of sales, because I know that you've done several sales trainings and stuff before. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, what has been your experience of of learning this? Like, has it been in alignment with you? Do you feel like connected to your prospect? Do you feel like you're able to, you know, sell from stage more? Is it easier to get on calls? Like, what was it like before and what is it like now? So, like, before it was really mass- more masculine selling. Um, and so it was harder to get on calls. It was harder to like go really, really deep because I didn't, you know, and it was hard to also get the sale because I'm not really digging deep into their pain. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not bringing them, I'm not getting to the gap, like widening the gap of pain and pleasure, what they really want. And so it was harder for me to get clients. And I got a few cl- clients here and there. Um, but it was, it was like, how do I bring them down, have, make them have a breakdown so they can have a breakthrough so then they can understand that my vehicle is the best vehicle from them to get from A to B. Um, and so when I joined this program, um, just the questions, it's like, you know, why do you want this? Why do you, you know, why are you having such a difficult time with this? Like, you know, why, 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 like seven layers deep before they have a breakdown. Um, and it's really been helping me, like, in, the, in my sales calls now, I'm able to get them to that level and then make have them have a breakthrough to see what they really, really want in their transformation. It's really been awesome. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of us ladies have an issue with getting somebody to go into a breakdown. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, because we don't want somebody to feel bad. It's hard. It's super difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, what has been your experience? Because I feel like when somebody has a breakthrough, it's because they had a breakdown. It's because they've been emotionally brought to a state where they feel internally disturbed so much. They're like, I have to change. I have to Mm -hmm. make someone new um so like has that also been your experience or like do you feel like it was harder at the beginning and now it's easier or or what is your thought process when you go into that it was definitely harder at the beginning because it's learning something new um it's like because i I mean i feel bad (laughs) because i like broke this person down you know like that because it it hurts me like when uh, you break this person down all the way down and then um, you have to, you know, help them to have a breakthrough, like, okay, this is, I want this, you know, and then like, how am I going to get there? Like, it's a, her vehicle is the best vehicle for me to get to this position so that I can have the things that I want. Yeah. Especially in like a health space, because these, some of these ladies that you're talking to have had this issue for years, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Hey, I haven't been able to lose weight in years. And guess what? Like we as humans don't like to have uh, habits changed very often. We like to be consistent with who we are. That like we are, we identify with the identity of who we are and we act in alignment with that. So you're breaking up belief patterns about health and fitness that are years old, sometimes decades old. Yeah. Right. And so how are we going to get this person in front of you to realize that like, yo, you're the problem. Mm-hmm. right and if you we don't change this you may not be able to walk you know your your daughter on the aisle yeah you with your grandkids uh-huh. it's nothing to do with making them feel bad about them but no. it's like a bad about what they won't be able to do like you get to get so in alignment with them that you care about what they get to experience like oh didn't you have like a couple that you know um husband wasn't doing that well and they mm-hmm. wanted to work together it's like about them to have a better relationship you know it's yeah. more than just us trying to get them to buy something right like hey can i get this person to realize that they are important enough to make a change today Mm -hmm. absolutely so what is your vision for these women like vision for what's possible my vision for these women is not only that they you know have some amazing real lasting health results but really is that they um start to make themselves a priority, start to know that they're worthy. Mm. I understand that they're worthy, understand that they have a purpose uh, in the earth to fulfill, and that you have to be healthy to fulfill that purpose in the earth. And so they're here for a reason. Mm. So that's my vision for them. Why are you here? Um, I'm here. <laughs> um, I, I really want to spread health to the world Mm. um i i believe that being healthy is the only way to fulfill your purpose um because i i have a god-given purpose um just like everybody else um and my purpose is to make sure the world is healthier and happier pretty much my experience of you has just been so mind blowing. Just like your ability to consistently show up. Like that's the number one thing for you. Just like always showing up. What's new? How else can I provide value? How else can I come to the table? Where else do I need a mold? Because like I'm trying to help people get results. Like it's always that. It's never out of like, oh, I'm trying this and it's not working or, oh, I'm trying this. And, um, you know, we were only able to serve this amount of audience. It's like, no, who else can I help? Who else can I help? Yeah. I help and consistently trying to find new avenues to be able to pour your heart mm-hmm. because you're a level of caring. And I feel like that's super rare and more people need to be like that. So I just really honor you. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. You being here and like, I love the shit out of you. Is there anything else that you would like to say to everyone before we, before we go? That, I mean, you know, if you're in this position, like you're working on the time, you're super busy, you, you have like, husbands and kids and or husband and kids and you can have husbands too you and your husband too whatever <laughs> you have all these men you got businesses you're like super super busy super tired super fatigued and you're you know you're really wanting some results in your health i'm really here to serve you 
Um, it's the best way I know how. I love you guys. Y'all have an amazing day. Thank you, Dr. T, for being with me today. Appreciate you. 